Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter, Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's episode is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. Thanks so much for your support. Now it's time for today's episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. And I'll warn you, the sound quality is um, poor, and I know Andrew will do all he can, but uh, just be advised, here is the temperamental tote board matter. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Ben Gordon, Johnny. Got a strange one. Now, well, who's the deceased and where did it happen? Well, his name's Luis Alvarado, a $50,000 life policy. He's a bachelor, his brother Jose is the beneficiary, and the two of them own a ride right track in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Well, uh, outside of the fact that not too many people own racetracks, what's so strange about it? Well, an exercise boy found him under the post board at the infield at 6 this morning. He had a 38 caliber bullet hole in his chest and a winning ticket on a long shot in his hand. Well, nothing. Well, I guess there's nothing stranger than a winning ticket on a long shot. How does that? The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John London and another adventure of a man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yes, truly, Johnny Dollar. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum present these weekend adventures of Johnny Dollar because they know that millions of you enjoy Johnny Dollar. And that's true of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, too. It's an enjoyed by millions, day in and day out. People who find that the chewing on a smooth, delicious piece of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum somehow will make time pass more pleasantly. Whether you're working, driving, shopping, or just taking things easy, that that good, tasty chewing gives you enjoyment and satisfaction. So always keep a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. And whenever you want a refreshing, delicious treat, chew a stick. You'll like it. You really, really will. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Washingtonian Life Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the temperamental tote board that matter. Expense account item one, $147.35. Airfare between Hartford and San Juan, Puerto Rico. I checked in at the Carib Hilton and then made my way to police headquarters where I introduced myself to Piano Cardinal, captain of the police. It is perhaps unfortunate you did not check with us by telephone before coming down, Senor Dollar. You might have saved yourself the trip. Oh, why is that, Captain? It is our belief that in insurance, Senor Luis Alvarado has no bearing whatsoever upon his murder. Well, what does have a... Perhaps you have heard of Anthony Randolph. Randolph? That, that's the same Tony Randolph who's connected with the Miami Gambling Syndicate? It is. It is here now in San Juan. And for, for several weeks, it has been attempting to persuade the Alvarado brothers to sell him an interest in the track. How, how's he making them out? Two days ago, Senor Luis Alvarado almost physically threw him out of his office. And now Luis is dead. Yes. But well, have you got anything you should try that uh, possible motive? Senor Alvarado was last seen by his employees working in his office and the track closed at the 6 of the clock last night. The death was caused by a 38 caliber bullet, and the time of the death was approximately 4 o'clock this morning. 
Where was Tony Randolph at that, that time? According to himself and three of his personal friends, he was at a seat in his room at the Fundano Beach Hotel. But that's the question of the alibi. Yeah. I understand that Alvarado's body was found under the coat board in the infield. Is uh, that where he was killed? We have no conclusive evidence either way. Now, what about that winning ticket on a long shot he had in his hand? It was a $10 ticket on Bea Maria, the winner of the fourth race yesterday. The price was $72 to win. Ah, not bad. Any idea what, what he was doing with the ticket? No, but it was hardly seen to have any bearing on the murder. Uh-huh. Of course, it is possible that our suspicions are wrong concerning this Anthony Randolph. However, I still do not believe you will find the insurance to be the most... You seem pretty sure of that, Captain. Why? Why? Luis and Jose Alvarado were always very close. Not only as partners in the race, but in other business ventures, but personally as well. After all, they were brothers. Yeah? So were Cain and Abel. That's the count item two, two dollars and then cab fare out to the, the discount for the racetrack. I got there between the fifth and sixth races, made my way to the, the west wing of the clubhouse, where the Alvarado brothers had their private office. Yes, oh, hello. Is the uh, Senor Alvarado in? Oh, I regret, Senor, but it is not. I am Maria Roldan, his confidence is sent to me. Maybe anything I could do for you? Uh, when will he be back, uh, Miss uh, Rodan? Not for several hours, Senor Jones. Sounds like you were expecting me. Mm-hmm. Of course. Because they had words that were arriving. Oh, how terribly and unfortunate it is his absence makes it necessary for me to work here this afternoon. Oh, why is that? Well, part of my duties consist of acting as hostess and even the special guest. They seem to think I make it a rather pleasant impression upon them. Yeah, I can see why. Too bad we'll have to postpone it. But I've had not had any longer than eight o'clock this season. At Avenida Piedra. And then what do you know? That's an easy number to remember. <laughs> Expense account item three, one dollar and eighty-five cents. Cab fare to the Condado Bobbiti Hotel. I found Tony Randolph on a private patio overlooking the beach. He came completely equipped with a slim trunk, dark glasses, and then three close mouth bodyguards hovering obtrusively in the background. Sure, I'll be glad to tell you what I can, Mr. Dollar, but uh, don't, don't figure why you came to see me. Well, you were trying to buy an interest in the Descanso racetrack from the Alvarado. Yeah, that's right. I came down here on a little bit of vacation, saw about the plant. It looked pretty good, so I figured I might invest a few bucks. How are you making up? Well, you know how these things are. It takes a little bit of time. The boys have been playing hard to get, trying to raise the price. But we're getting on okay. A little fuss with Louis Alvarado at the office the other day. What fuss? We were just climbing around, that's all. Just climbing around. Uh-huh. I don't suppose you'd have any idea who killed him. Me? How could I know anything like that? I just met the guy when I came down here. All I know is he seemed a nice guy, had a nice plant here, and I wanted to go in with him. How would I have any idea who'd want to kill him? Just all right, eh? Huh? That's okay, Mr. Dollar. You got a 50 grand insurance investment. Before you pay off, you want to make sure everything's on the up and up. I'll bring you one bit. And I'll tell him tell you what I'll do for you. Yeah? What's that? I got a few connections down there. Some uh, friends owe me a couple of things, you know? Yeah, I know. Oh, sometimes they get to talking about things like that. Shooting the breeze, nothing better to do. If I hear anything, I'll let you know. However, that'll be just great. Expense account item four, one dollar and eighty-five cents. Cab fare back to the Descanso racetrack. After that rather fruitless interview with Tony Randolph, I was hoping that Jose Alvarado would be back and I might have better luck with him. But as I approached Alvarado's office, 
Captain Cardinal came hurrying out. Oh, Senor Dollar, you are just in time. Yeah, for what? My office just called. There is a shooting at the home of Jose Alvarado. And the report was phoned in to my office by his son, Tomas. What did he have to say? He was rather agitated and did not talk long enough to give details. He merely reported that there had been a shooting and requested that an ambulance be sent to the house immediately. Tomas Alvarado was waiting at the house to greet us. And so was a corpse stretched out on the living room floor, a thirty-eight caliber revolver laying beside an outstretched hand. Tomas did the honor. His name is Julio Mendoza, a former employee of ours at the track. Why did he have done such an intense thing I do not know? Well, just what did he do, Mr. Alvarado? I do not know what started it. I was in the library going over the list of Paul Bell for my uncle's funeral. When I heard the angry voices arguing in here. Your father's voice and Mendoza's? Si. There was a sound like a blow and I heard my father cry out. I took a gun from the desk and came in here. That forty-five cold automatic on the table over there? Ah, si. As I came running in, Mendoza fired a shot at me. I fired one in return and he fell. Then I ran over to my father. He was alive, Senor Alvarado. He was unconscious. He had a bad heart. Whether it was a blow or the excitement of the argument, I do not know. I put in the call for an ambulance and it took my father to the hospital. And then you were You said Mendoza was a former employee. That is correct. He was a thorough mutual machine operator. He was discharged yesterday by my uncle Luis for stealing. Now, obviously, there is some connection between that, the thing with my father, and possibly my uncle's son. Fortunately, there is no need to speculate. When your father regains consciousness, he can tell us. Might not hurt to speculate about one thing, Captain. What is that, Senor Dollar? A bit of pasteboard under Mendoza's arm. Looks like a paramutual ticket to me. It is, Senor. Ten dollar win ticket in the fourth race yesterday. Number 214, Bella Maria. When the homicide men arrived, Tomas Alvarado dictated a statement to them and then left for the hospital. Captain Cardenas went to headquarters. I went back to the Hilton. Expense account item five, six dollars and seventy-five cents. Drinks and sandwiches on the hotel veranda while waiting for eight o'clock and my rendezvous with Maria Roldan. My peaceful contemplation of the view was interrupted by two phone calls. The first was from Captain Cardinal. We have just received a report from the listing, Senor Dollar. Julio Mendoza's gun is the same one which killed Senor Luis Alvarado. Obviously, our case is closed. The second call was from Tony Randolph. That took a little longer. Where did you hear that, Randolph? I told you I had connections. Yeah, so you did. Well, the word around town is you got the wrong cookie. Very interesting. What else does the word have to say? Nothing much. Only that somebody's figured out a way of beating the races. Maybe if you find out who it is and how it's done, you'll have your man. You have any suggestions? No matter what kind of work you do, there are bound to be times when the job seems monotonous. You feel tense and restless, and you need something to give you a boost. Well, you'll be surprised how helpful a stick of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum can be at times like that. You see, chewing on a smooth piece of Wrigley Spearmint gum is a natural way to ease tension and relieve that feeling of restlessness. The easy chewing gives you satisfaction. You get a nice little lift out of it. And Wrigley Spearmint Gum tastes good, too. Its flavor is lively, refreshing Spearmint, a flavor millions enjoy. Try it and see for yourself. Get a few packages of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum and chew a stick from time to time while you work. 
Chewing this delicious gum will make your job seem easier and pleasanter. It really will. And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account item six, one dollar and seventy-five cents. Cab fare to Avenida Piedras number forty-nine, a swank ultra-modern apartment building in the newer San Perse section. It spelled money, and so did the lush evening gown Maria was wearing as she greeted me. How nice of you to be so prompt, Jenny. You're even a bit early. Well, I was hoping you wouldn't mind. Oh, how could I mind? As you see, I'm already dressed. And when a woman is dressed and ready when her escort arrives, it usually indicates she's traveling to her. Yeah. What I'm trying to figure out is uh, why. <laughs> you should not be very scanners. You're always looking for a reason, for motivation. Is it not enough that a woman finds you attractive and wishes to spend some time in your company? Well, I suppose it could be. But it is not? In this case, no. I was afraid this evening would not turn out as pleasantly as I thought. I'm sorry. There's no need to be. After all, you're down here on business. I can understand. I will answer your questions as best I can. Thanks. Well, suppose we start with Luis Alvarado's murder and those Bella Maria win tickets. Johnny, are you familiar with the operation of a fine mutual trust? As familiar as I want to be. Well, then you know it operates like a complicated adding machine. As each ticket is fine, spot, and so, the stories appear on the illuminated board in the infield. At the end of each race, the amount of money that has been bet is paid out on the winning horses. It is a foolproof system, entirely automatic. Neither more nor less money that has been bet can be paid out. Well, you've spelled it out pretty clearly. Now, uh, why? Johnny, $21,000 was bet on the fourth race yesterday. As of 6 o'clock this afternoon, more than 26000 have been paid out on winning tickets. Over 5000 more than had been bet. Yes. You sure about that? I saw the head bookkeeper sit in front of the clock in front. Was the overage all paid out on $10 win tickets on Bay of Maria? Yes, it was. Has this ever happened before? I do not know. Only Jose and Luis ever see the figures. It is only because I was there alone today that I happened to see them. Uh-huh. What does Tomas Alvarado do at the track? Well, he must charge a regard and protect himself. And uh, Julio Mendoza? Did he operate at a very neutral machine? At a $10 window? Yes. Hmm? Very interesting. So interesting that it will interfere with our plans for the season? There'll be other nights, Maria. Uh... Expensive car item seven, $2.40. Cab fare to police headquarters. Captain Cardinus didn't seem to be too impressed with my latest information. No, Senor Dollar, I do not believe it is possible. I can think of no way in which the Paddy Mutuel system could be fixed. Well, the extra 5000 paid out on Bayer Maria must mean something. We have only the word of Senorita Roldan that such a sum was paid out. Well, the bookkeeper could verify it. I will check on it, of course, Senor Dollar. But this much I can tell you now. It is mechanically impossible to fix the tote board or to punch out any tickets after the race begins. What about forgery? Well, that too would be virtually impossible. Each ticket has an especial picture code printed upon it, and the codes are changed with every race. Well, that sounds pretty foolproof, doesn't it? Believe me, it is, Senor Dollar. And even if it were not, what possible connection could all this have with the murder of Luis Alvarado? I wish you hadn't asked that, Captain. It's been bothering me, too. I borrowed a headquarters car from Cardenas to take the burden off the cab fare items on this expense account and drove out to the Condado Beach Hotel. Tony Randolph was in the gambling casino. His mood wasn't quite as expansive as it had been earlier that day. Okay, Dollar, what's on your mind now? And make it snappy, will you? I've got things to do. You sound like the dice have been biting the hands of Rosa. So the cold. Come on, let's get on with it. Sure. Just tell me who you're gunning for, and you can go back to the table. You better clean up that crack, Dollar, and give it to me straight. You're no philanthropist, Randolph. You didn't pass along the word this afternoon out of the kindness of your heart. What's it to you why I passed? If it's straight, it'd get you off the hook, do it? Even if it's not, it could get you off one, too. That's supposed to mean something? Yeah. 
If Jose Alvarado is sent up for the murder of his brother, he might have an easier job getting a hold of that racetrack stuff. And you'd save that 50 grand in insurance. So where's your beef, darling? No beef, if it works out that way. Why don't you make sure it does? Well, maybe I need a little professional advice. Let's take a walk outside. Yeah, sure. Okay, Dollar, let that. Well, it could be like this. Somebody figures a way to beat the mutual. Luis Alvarado tumbles to it, so he's kept quiet with a thirty-eight caliber slug. That could make sense. Only they tell me the mutuals can't be beat. They could be wrong. How wrong? There's no law against cash and winning tickets a day or two after the race. Well, you have to get the tickets first. Or print them yourself. What's it take to do that? You have to get into the track when it's closed. Get hold of the codes and a roll of ticket paper. And know how to operate one of the machines without flashing a tote board. Takes a lot of doing. Not if you're head man at the track. Yeah. Anything else on your mind, Don? No. No, I don't think so. I do not know, Senor Dollar. It is still a theory without proof. Well, the bookkeeper should be able to supply us with some. No, I am afraid not. Oh? Why? If he was called away from the track after the seventh race from family business. He died in a traffic accident on the way. Are you sure it was an accident? Oh, there is no question. Uh-huh. An unfortunate occurrence for us. Yeah, even tougher for him. Yes. Of course, he can always check the records of the track, and in that way... We... Your pardon. Sure, go ahead. Captain Cardenas. Si. Gracias. I think perhaps you will find this of interest, Senor Dollar. What is it? The gun found beside Mendoza's body. It is registered to Senor Jose Alvarado. Before leaving the office with Captain Cardenas, I found time for one short telephone call. I think I'll be able to drop around in about an hour, Maria. I will be waiting. The hospital told us that Jose Alvarado's condition was still too critical to allow questioning. So the captain and I went out to the Descanso racetrack instead. The full moon was taking a siesta behind a bank of clouds, and the dim, shadowy bulk of the grandstand looked deserted. The watchman at the gate assured us that no one had entered the track since closing time. I think perhaps we are being rather foolish, Senor Dollar. There is nothing to be learned out here at this hour of the night. What about the bookkeeper's report? We could wait until the morning. Maybe it wouldn't be there by then. That is a possibility, of course. However, the hospital assures me that Senor Alvarado could not be released for some time. Well, I won't do any harm to look. Wait for me. In there, behind that ticket case, the light. Yeah. I could not even be doing in there. Operating one of the paramutual machines. By hand. There is an entrance to the cage of the big fellow. We have here. Yeah. The police! Stand still! So, it was Tomas Alvarado. Oh, for an ambulance. An ambulance. I don't die out here. I don't think your Uncle Louis wanted to either. A 
On the way to the hospital, Tomas Alvarado gave us a confession to the murders of Luis Alvarado and Julio Mendoza. Both were motivated by their separate discoveries of Tomas's little plan for getting rich off his father's racetrack. When the surgeon finally convinced him he wasn't going to die, he decided to retract and left a few details unanswered. But he had told us enough to satisfy Captain Card- Cardenas. So it was as I told you in the beginning, Senor Dollar. The insurance had nothing to do with this matter. Yeah, but you've got to admit Jose Alvarado was involved. Apparently, only to the extent of a blackmail attempt by Julio Mendoza. However, that need be no concern of yours. The unfinished business we will take care of in due time. Say, that reminds me. I've got a little unfinished business of my own. Maria was waiting for me as agreed. She's even more lush and lovely than she had earlier. She recommended a nightclub. And on our way downtown, I gave her a short resume of what had happened. Why, it was Tomas who was responsible. Why is that? He could have had everything he wanted. He'd only been willing to wait for it. His father's money, you mean? Yes. It would have come to him in time. To do this, deliberately rob and murder because he wanted the money now. Well, who knows? Maybe somebody talks them into it. Maybe it's for some woman. Maybe both together. I suppose that is true. Oh, what then why should we concern ourselves about it now? This is our land, Johnny. There will be nothing more to spoil it. Yeah, I think that was probably it. What? The combination. Some woman talking into it. He had to be working with somebody. He couldn't have cashed all those extra tickets himself. He had that giveaway. Well, so somebody else helped him to spread them around. Oh, Johnny, you're talking about business again. What did you do with the tickets, Maria? What? Sell them at a discount to some fence? I'm not being very funny, Johnny. This is your idea of a pleasant thing. No easy. good, Maria. You tipped it when you said you saw the bookkeeper's figures at the end of the racing day. Too bad you didn't know he'd left the track at the end of the seventh race. Yes. It was a good try of keeping your own skirts clean, but it didn't work out. Johnny, he's at police headquarters. Yeah. Let's go in, shall we? <laughs> Expense account item eight, thirty-eight dollars and fifteen cents. Hotel bill and miscellaneous. Expense account item nine, one hundred fifty-two dollars and ten cents, airfare back to Hartford. Expense account total, three hundred fifty-four dollars and ninety-five cents. Remarks: Jose Alvarado was still too ill the next day to have any visitors, so I left Puerto Rico without seeing him. Perhaps it's just as well. How can you give a man fifty thousand dollars with one hand and take away his son with the other? Your story, Johnny Dollar. Welcome back. I couldn't help but feeling that the name of the police inspector was somehow being uh, mispronounced. However... I'll give uh, Johnny Dollar the benefit of the doubt on this one. All right, well, we turn to listener comments and feedback. And Mary writes, I like all your shows. Keep up the good work. Thanks so much, Mary. Uh, I do have a couple quick notes before we go. Next month's going to be our listener support campaign. And I'd love to hear from you uh, what types of items you'd like to have included as thank you gifts. I've thought about uh, adding for our U.S. listeners, like packs of actual uh, mystery books, some of the favorites I read uh, in the last year, or some specifically with Nero Wolf. You can take a look at our current list at support.greatdetectives.net. The campaign does not start till 
uh, later on in the month of February. But uh, if you have some suggestions, email them to me. I'd love to hear uh, what you think we could add. And it's at box13 at greatdetectors.net. Be sure and rate the show on iTunes. I appreciate we've got 171 iTunes ratings, uh, plus uh, more on some of the individual shows. But uh, you can rate the show. We appreciate reviews, but uh, they're not uh, required. But uh, from Boise, Idaho, that'll do it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with a, with the lineup, and then join us uh, back here next Friday for yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And uh, this is Adam Graham signing off.